And as I begin the sermon today, I invite you to please join your hearts and minds with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A familiar voice, as Pastor Joe mentioned when he welcomed you to worship, a familiar voice of Advent comes into our worship time uh, today. John the Baptist is a very, very familiar Advent voice. And uh, as we uh, spend some time with John today, uh, let's uh, decide right from the start that we're going to focus on what's important. Because uh, it seems to me that uh, we m- many times major in the minors when it comes to John the Baptist. Okay? Uh, it seems that uh, something that a lot of folks remember about John is his, to our ears and eyes, peculiar wardrobe and diet. Okay? Let me read that part again, just so we can not talk about it the rest of the sermon. Okay? Now, John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Want me to sum that phrase up for you? It's not about the honey. Pastor Joe taught me that. It's not about the honey. It's not about the locusts. It's not about his clothes. That's not what it's about. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 40, his preaching in the wilderness was prophesied. Hundreds of years before it happened. Hundreds of years before it happened. And the honey's never mentioned. Ever in Isaiah 40. In fact, it's quoted, just part of it, for some reason, both Matthew and Luke, as they recorded that the gospel, inspired by God, of course, they left off what I think is the most important part of uh, Isaiah 40 and the prophecy. And just because they didn't put it in doesn't mean we shouldn't go back to Isaiah 40 and see what it is. Okay? And in Isaiah 40, we read this prophecy about Matthew 3 and then Luke 3. A voice cries, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And here's the verse that goes with it. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. It wasn't John's message. Friends, It wasn't John's message to make up. It wasn't John's message to change. It wasn't John's message at all. It was God's message. It was God's message through Isaiah. It was God's message through John. And the message cries out to us this morning here in Plymouth, Minnesota. And the message is this. Prepare the way of the Lord through a specific way. 
And that way is through repentance. Repentance doesn't have a good name in our culture because it reminds us that we have things to change, that we are not always correct. Yes, I'm talking to you. And it's not my message. Although, after all these years, I know you well enough that I can say that. And by the way, you know me well enough that you can say it back. But this business of repenting, it's more, friends, it's more than just saying I'm sorry. It's more than just uh, being sad over our sins, although that's part of it. Because repentance involves a conversion of the mind, a conversion of the heart. Repentance means Seeing things from God's way. And repentance means changing, changing and responding to the glory of the Lord. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the God who has come to earth. Jesus is the one who has taken our sins upon himself. Jesus is the one for whom we prepare. Because the Lord is coming. And he's coming to reign. Not R-A-I-N. R-E-I-G-N. Okay? He's coming to reign and to rule over the heavens and the earth. He's also coming to reign and to rule over your heart and your mind and your life and your eternity as well as mine. And when John the Baptist looked at the people coming to him for the baptism of repentance and forgiveness, he told them to have a conversion of the mind. Even called the Pharisees and the Sadducees brood of vipers. And if you read in Luke 3, Luke's account of this, it has the specific ways that they were to live out their repentance. That's the key phrase today, friends. Living out their repentance. One of them, he told the tax collectors, don't collect more than you're supposed to take. Everything we know, everyone who did that took more. And they pocketed it. And they ripped the people off. And John said, in the wilderness, don't do that anymore. Because... The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. And folks, we have to focus and ask ourselves that question. The same as them. What does it mean to live into our repentance? What does it mean to live into your repentance? What are the things that need to change? In your lives. And that's true for us as individuals, and it's true for us as a congregation of God's people. What needs to change? What needs to change? Because there's always something that needs changing, there is always something. That needs refining. 
There's always something in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions that needs to change. And that's our response to the God who loves us. That's our response. And we don't come to worship today as Pharisees and Sadducees, do we? We come as the baptized children of God. We come as those who have received God's grace and who now have to respond to it. And now have to go about our lives in a way that God would have us to go about our lives. He doesn't call us to follow him by following ourselves. He doesn't call us to keep following the ways of the world. He doesn't call us to keep following the ways of our enemy, the devil. He calls us to follow him and to live as he would have us live. My wife Kristen and I have been reflecting on this because the question really is, what would it look like? What would it look like for us to live into our repentance? As I said, we've been talking about that. She's sitting right over here. We've been talking about that. And one thing that I've noticed and we've noticed is living into our repentance changes with our circumstances. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Because you see, one thing we are grateful for today, and I know next week's the farewell, but, right, Pastor, you preached about that. This is Minnesota, right? Yeah, we, long goodbyes take more than one Sunday. Okay? When you spend 31 years together, I think we can give it a couple of weeks. What do you think? Okay? So let me reminisce with you a little bit as I share this. Okay? I really believe this. How we live out our repentance changes with our circumstances. And we are grateful, Kristen and I, that we have been blessed to live out our repentance here with you for 31 years. Okay? For 31 years, and we're blessed by you. And we thought about this, of all the things in our lives we've been through while we've been with you. As always, we've lived on our repentance uh, through the gift of marriage. Many of you do the same thing every day. And the words of Scripture are really plain. Husbands and wives love each other, care for each other, support each other, encourage each other. And we've lived that out among you, and you've supported us in that, and we thank you. We lived out our repentance for quite a while, as in raising two sons. Many of you have done the same thing, and you've experienced the same thing, because then you get to live out your repentance by relating to them as adults. Wow! Doesn't that dynamic shift? And we got to do that here with you. In our case, we got to live out our repentance, and we're called to do that through illness of our parents, and then through their deaths and through the funerals of all four of our parents. And you were there for us. And you encouraged us and you supported us. 
And when those funerals were held in Chicago and in Wadena, many of you came and made that trip just to support us. And we will be eternally grateful to you for that. And now, we're going to get to live out our life of repentance, our repentance, in a new season. And so will you. A new season, both for the Stobigs and for beautiful Savior. And I'm going on record this weekend. Yeah, this is out online. Everyone's going to know you're in good hands. I am delighted in your choice of your next senior pastor. I am delighted that God led Pastor Joseph Benke to serve with me for almost nine years. And he was in the trenches with me Every day, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And I am delighted that he is to be your pastor. And I am delighted that you will receive him and Katie and Nick and Zach as you received me and Kristen and Andrew and Ben. And I thank God, we thank God that we were enabled to live out our repentance with you. And I want to challenge you because this is still crying in the wilderness. And it might not be the wilderness of Judea, but it's the wilderness of the suburbs of Minneapolis. And if you don't think we live in a wilderness filled with sin and trials and struggles, open your eyes. But we live as the children of God. And God has intervened in our lives through Christ. Hmm. And our repentance is our response. Our repentance is our response. And our response is our repentance. May God continue to lead you, guide you, strengthen you, support you as you respond because he's going to keep bringing his message to you. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. And what the mouth of the Lord has spoken is what directs the preaching and the teaching in this church. It has for 98 years. And it will continue to do that. And as you repent, God will be blessed by you. And he will continue to bless you. May God continue his work among you as you cry in the wilderness and be a beacon on this corner. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.